So here is the back of my Solari Dater 10 clock. It's almost 100% uh, functional now. It's all cleaned up. And uh, so the major modification I added recently is uh, uh, to replace the ballasts uh, for the tube. This is why I made for a weird European voltage I've never seen before. It's 160 volts. And that's actually what's written on, on the clock over here. It says it was made for that voltage. I have no idea why. And of course, that doesn't work here. So, um, fortunately, I could find a, neat, a ballast that uh, fits in here. Replace the tubes. I took the starters out. And now, try plug it in. And, yep, it lights up instantly. Thanks to the electronic ballast. And uh, this is a slave clock. Uh, so it doesn't have a synchronous motor, it just has an impulse motor. So this thing turns once a minute and you have to give it either 12 or 24 volt pulse depending on how you set it over here. Uh, and alternate uh, the polarity of the pulse every time you give it. So every minute it's a different polarity. So here I have uh, hooked it up to this little circuit uh, which is a, a PIEXX. Uh, it's a guy in the UK that makes those. Um, and oh, it's a rather simple thing to, to do on your own, but since you already did it and it's nice, it has a 24 volt power supply. Uh, so there you go. Ah, I had it set on the, on the wrong pulse, so I have to wait a, another minute to, to see how it works. Uh, so let's try to move it and see what's in the front. I'll set you down here for a second because I need to take my two hands to move that enormous 60 pound thing. Here we go. So here we are. And uh, let's set it up to some interesting time. So I go over here, I turn it so you cannot. You have to be very careful how to adjust it. Um, if not, things get out of whack pretty quickly uh, and it doesn't shift on the tens of minutes. But that's some weird error. Uh, and here, over here, it's a bit more complicated. I have to take it off. Okay, let's put it. So same thing, I have to do it with the units. So it's a European clock, so it counts up to 24. One, two, three. All right, and see where we are here. Actually, I think I can. Uh, huh, huh, huh. So I have one chance out of two to have the right pulse polarity here. We'll see. Um, so this works, this works, this I have still to repair and mechanism is stuck. Uh, but it still works. If you push it a little bit, um, it will work. It's a spring driven mechanism that does a leap here. So let's see if we got the shift here. Oh yes, it works. So we're on the right polarity. So all that works, but the date hasn't changed. Uh, the date assembly is the most complex of that clock, so you see how it works. Um, the num first number of minutes drives the uh, tens of minutes. And here this thing, every full revolution, which is 60 minutes, gives it a tug, which drives the hours. The hours go one step, there's 24 steps, and at the end of 24 is a big gap, so it goes from 24 to 30, click, 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 you don't see it, and it goes back to zero. Uh, and every turn of this, there's another cam, so it drives the days, which is a simple you know, seven pin mechanism. And then it drives the date, which is actually quite complex mechanism because it does um, both uh, 30 and 31 days for the month, and uh, the leap years too. It, uh, so that one is actually uh, complex and it's spring driven and uh, the, the, the spring doesn't have enough, enough force to move it because it's all, it's all old and stuck. But, uh, so I have to take it apart and clean it, but I think it will work. 
So it's, it's a pretty nice clock, it's fascinating. You, you watch it like a cuckoo clock, you sit in front of it oh no, at, uh, just before 12 o'clock waiting for things to, to turn around. Pretty neat Italian vintage clock from the 50s. The Solari Udini Dater 10.